I thought for a change I'd come to more familiar territory, well for me, and look at some biology topics. My aim is to do a series on the strangeness of our genetics, but first I wanted to do an introductory video looking at that molecule of life itself, DNA. What it is, how it works, and how it relates to life. Let's find out more. DNA is a molecule made from two strands. Each of the strands has got a similar structure. But let's just have a look at one of the strands, it makes things a bit easier. Each strand is made from many, many molecules called nucleotides. And each nucleotide is formed from a sugar molecule, a phosphate, and an interesting molecule called an organic base. In the molecule of DNA, there are four different organic bases called adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine and each nucleotide could have any one of these four organic base molecules. The nucleotides are all joined together in a big long strand with a whole host of these different of organic base molecules but they aren't random. The sequence of these organic bases is very important. The opposite strand has a similar structure but is actually upside down. The organic bases on this strand point inwards to face the organic bases on the other one, and the bases on one strand will determine which base faces it on the other strand. An adenine on one strand will always mean there's a thymine on the other strand, lying opposite to it, and vice versa. Similarly, a cytosine on one strand will always pair with a guanine on the other strand. In the final DNA molecule, these sugars and phosphate parts we can see here are on the outside and the organic bases point inwards towards the middle, like the rungs of a ladder. The whole molecule then twists into a spiral, or as we call it, a double helix molecule. So why is it so important? Well, it's all to do with proteins. In biology, proteins are everything. Proteins are little biological machines that make pretty much everything happen. They carry gases around your body and your blood. They're responsible for muscle contraction. They even allow cells to divide and move substances into and out of the cells. Life is possible because of proteins. Proteins do everything in biology. And these little biological machines, the proteins, work because of their shape. In the same way that a specific kind of screwdriver is needed to turn a specific kind of screw, proteins only work because they have the right shape needed to do their job. This means that the shape of proteins is vitally important for them to be able to carry out their roles. So how can proteins have a certain shape? Well, proteins are made from long strings of molecules called amino acids and there are 20 different amino acids used to make our proteins. And they're put together in big long chains, huge chains containing hundreds or even thousands of amino acids. These big long chains then fold in on themselves to finally form that all important three dimensional shape that allows the protein to do its job. And here's the interesting bit. The specific order of the different amino acids will determine the specific shape of the protein. Think of amino acids a bit like the letters of an alphabet. There are only a limited number of letters, but by putting them together in different numbers and orders, I can make millions of different words. The number and the orders of the letters in a word is vitally important. Change your letter, and you can change the word. So what has DNA got to do with all of this? Well, remember I said that the order of those bases wasn't random, and this is why. The order of the bases on a molecule of DNA will determine the order of the amino acids in a protein and therefore determine the shape of the protein. In the nucleus of all of our cells, we find the DNA, which acts as a set of instructions to tell our cells how to make all the proteins that they need. And this DNA inside the nucleus is in the form of 46 chromosomes, and these are arranged into 23 pairs. Although in reality, they don't pour up like this under normal circumstances. Each of these chromosomes is made from a very long molecule of DNA wrapped around proteins called histone proteins and then coiled up to make the DNA molecule. 
and this makes it very compact. Our DNA is also organised into sections, and each section contains the instructions for just one protein, and these sections are called genes. In actual fact, it's not quite that straightforward, but I think that's for another video. For now, let's just assume that one gene contains the instructions for one protein, and each of our cells contains about 30,000 genes. So how do these instructions work? Well, on the DNA molecule, the organic bases work in threes, with each set of three organic bases being the code for one amino acid. Even though the DNA molecule is double-stranded, only one of the strands contains the instructions for the protein. The other strand is actually used to help the DNA molecule make copies of itself, which it needs to do every time a cell divides. And our cells are dividing all the time in our bodies. And this process uses each strand in a molecule of DNA as a template to build new strands of DNA. So anyway, back to the DNA contained within the nucleus. As I've already said, this contains the instructions needed to make all of our proteins. So what happens when I want to make a protein? Well, the instructions to make all the proteins are contained here in the chromosomes. But the protein making machines, and these are called ribosomes, are all the way out here in the cell cytoplasm. Well firstly, the section of DNA that corresponds to the protein that I want to make unwinds itself from the histone protein that's wrapped around. It then separates the two strands from each other, and finally it uses the DNA strand as a template to make a different molecule called RNA. Specifically this is messenger RNA or mRNA. Remember I said earlier that what is on one strand of DNA determines the basis on the other strand? Well, RNA works using the same principle. What is on the strand of DNA is used as a blueprint to make a molecule of RNA. It is then this molecule of RNA that leaves the nucleus of the cell and then travels to the ribosomes in the cell cytoplasm. Here, the ribosome reads the RNA molecule, three bases at a time, and joins the corresponding amino acids together in this ever-growing chain of amino acids that's eventually going to form a protein. Here I have a piece of RNA and it's made of 12 nucleotides and so we can see that there are 12 bases. In RNA there isn't any thymine, it uses a different base instead called uracil but don't worry about that too much. Each triplet of bases on the RNA is called a codon and will code for one amino acid. This means that this piece of RNA here, that is 12 bases long, will code for four amino acids. Each of the codons will determine a different amino acid to be added to the growing chain. This codon here signifies the amino acid glycine. This other codon here will signify a different amino acid, and in this case it's the amino acid alanine. However, there are four of these codons that are all important. This codon here means start. In other words, it instructs the ribosome to start reading the RNA and therefore to start assembling the protein. There are also three codons that mean stop. These tell the ribosome to stop reading the RNA and will signify the end of the process. The finished chain of amino acids will then fold itself into the final three-dimensional shape. These codons are vitally important. The wrong base may signify the wrong amino acid and this may well affect the shape of the protein that's being produced. So it's vitally important that these instructions are correct. It's also a tiny bit more complicated than that. This piece of DNA that we call a gene actually contains more bases than are needed to act as the instructions for the desired protein. Once the molecule of RNA has been made, this process is called transcription by the way, the piece of RNA that's been made contain sections that are going to be expressed, in other words, to act as the instructions for our protein. These sections are called exons. It also contains base sequences between the ones that are going to be used, and these are not going to be used as our instructions for the protein. These intervening sequences, or introns, are cut out of the RNA, and the exons are then spliced together to make a piece of RNA that the ribosomes can then use to make the protein. So what happens if there's a mistake? 
A change to one or more of the bases in a molecule of DNA is called a mutation. There are lots of different types of mutations, but the ones I'm interested here are ones called gene mutations or point mutations. These can occur when the DNA in one of your cells gets changed a little bit. Sometimes a new nucleotide with an additional base can be added to an existing sequence. Alternatively, a nucleotide could get deleted from an existing sequence. A third possibility is that a nucleotide containing one base could be swapped with a different base. If you look, all of these have changed the sequence of bases and have thus changed the instructions. Mutations are happening all the time though, and they're very largely not noticed. Mainly because a change in the instructions in one cell has got very little impact as long as the rest of your cells all have the correct instructions. Mutations are however responsible for cancer, and if you inherit a mutation, the mistake will then be in the single cell that you grew from. This means that all of your cells in your body will have the same mistake. When your cells use the faulty DNA to make a protein, the instructions are wrong, and this may lead to the wrong amino acid being inserted into the chain. This will have the effect of making the protein that's produced have the wrong shape, and so it won't be able to do its job properly. Like I said, if this happens in just one of your cells, as long as most of your cells have got the correct instructions, then it doesn't really matter. If, however, this mistake exists in all of your cells, you'll be unable to make a particular protein properly, and this may lead to you having a genetic disorder. And this is where I want to leave this video for now. I do want to do some videos about our weird world of genetics and how inheritance works. But for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.